Hi everyone, Nick Smolowski here with Bad Elf. We're doing a quick video tutorial on how you use the Bad Elf Flex uh, in standalone logging mode. You're going to see there are two ways to go about doing this. You can use the Flex itself and the on-screen buttons, um, or you can use the Bad Elf Flex app from your smart device. That can be Android uh, or iOS. Okay, and so today we're going to be looking at again how to do a standalone logging point. So for this option, we're going to go ahead and jump into the Bad Elf Flex app. Note that I am already connected to the Bad Elf Flex via Bluetooth and that I am getting a GPS lock. I'm also in what we call extreme accuracy mode. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So just bear with me for one second. And you should now be able to see the actual Bad Elf Flex app. You'll notice that there is a logging set of buttons here, uh, three down in the middle. So if you click logging, you can see that you have a lot of options. You can click the log instant point and you can enter the name or it'll sequentially iterate. I'm gonna click okay. You'll actually hear a few beeps on the Bad Elf Flex, perhaps you heard that, and it took the point. If I wanted to collect another point, you'll see that it iterated to alphanumeric 05, I click OK. This is a great way to do topo shots if you want, or if you just need a random location for down the road, or perhaps you're in an RTK situation and you wanna lay a ground control point, you could do that. Additionally, you could do timed points, and so if I wanna log a timed point, I can click that. It'll give you the point name, and perhaps you wanna put timed on the, uh, the, the, the label for the name, just to know and you can see that it is now doing a uh, timed point. Now, in the settings, which we're gonna talk about in just a few minutes here, uh, you can change what the duration of the time is. You can see that right now it is a 60 second uh, time. Know that statistically speaking, that the more time you average for a point, a single location, right, a, a known measurement, uh, statistically it will normally give you a better uh, um, accuracy reading. Not all the time, um, but when you take multiple locations and you average them, it can provide a better location for a point. Um, while that's logging there, I just want to quickly scroll down. You can see that we can also do raw point logging. And you may ask yourself, what is the difference between raw point logging and the logging we just looked at for the instant point and the timed point? The difference is that raw logging and we're gonna see here just quickly, the timed point just finished and went down to zero. And then you can, um, we can continue here. So the raw point is actually the raw GNSS data that is collected uh, that you can utilize to post-process with solutions such as Opus provided by the US government or the software RTK lib or library. Uh, additionally, the U.S. or the sorry, the Canadian government also uh, has a post-correction service. So, if you want to collect a log raw point, you can do that, and then you download the data off of the Flex, uh, which we'll be showing you here in just a moment, and you can then upload it to one of those services to get a post-corrected, extremely highly accurate point. Okay, so you can also set the time there. One thing to note. There are two things called rapid, rapid static collection and static collection. In the world of surveying, rapid static means 15 minutes. Okay, so you want to collect a 15 minute point, you need to actually collect a few seconds longer than that, and that's so Opus can post correct it under rapid static. A static location traditionally is two hours or more of data collection on these same points, so something to consider. Additionally, you can see that there are track logs. So if we want to have the breadcrumb trail of everywhere that we're going, so a bunch of polylines, we can do a track log. Interestingly, I like to operate that the track log is always on. So you can turn track logging on, right? What's neat about this is it's going to record your breadcrumb trail, but simultaneously to that track log, you can still record instant points, you can still record raw points, and you could still use a third-party app like Esri Collector uh, or Survey123 to collect data in that app. And so you can be simultaneously at the same time in parallel and tandem be collecting different data. Last but not least, 
The flex works in a bin of data. So when you start the flex up, it creates a new project based on the date and you can see an alphanumeric code under project name. And everything that you record, any of those standalone loggings will be saved into that project. And when you download that project, all of it will go in that same zip folder. So if you wanna start a new project, you can. Just know that it's gonna reset and then save that onto the flex for later. Last but not least, I wanted to show you the logging settings. And you can see here that you can change your prefix for your point logging. You can change the timing for how long you're doing time points. You can set some thresholds for accuracy. Um, again, lots of really good information here. You can do some auto stopping if you're doing raw points. Uh, you can also, again, change the Rhinex header configuration. And so the uh, file that gets downloaded, depending on how you want some of that uh, laid out, we can also change that as well. So hopefully this very quick um, video tutorial will get you off and running with uh, collecting logs uh, or standalone logging or what we call uh, standalone data collection, right? You can use the Bad Elf Flex to do this. Um, and here in just a second, we're gonna show you how to actually physically download these logs off of the Flex. Just remember that the Flex, you, know, you will have to plug a USB into the Flex and, um, and then download those points uh, from there by either exporting the project or rebooting the Flex, which we'll show you here in a little bit.